This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. me hearties and welcome once again to full stream ahead i'm your captain charlie the professor esser and with me as always is me first mate and skinny rich friend it's maz welcome back maz tonight's episode agent carter season two episode seven monsters mm. as piggy plots a rescue mission Whitney hunts for even more dark power, and Jarvis learns he should not make promises he cannot keep. Mm. Our director this evening is Metin uh, Hus- Hussein, as Metin Hussein. I don't know the difference between those two, but okay. Uh, our writers, of course, Stanley and Jack Kirby get our Marvel comics created by credit. Um... Uh, Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely are created buys. This episode was written by Brandon Easton and two for the price of one story editors, Sue Chung and Eric Pearson. And then the person that makes them both executives, hardest working woman in show business this week, Lindsay Allen. Allen, uh, Lindsay Allen is our story editor. Hmm. Okay. Um, so tonight, tonight we open up. At Anvil Studios, um, which is an interesting name. I don't know if that's supposed to be a reference to anything, which is weird because you'd think there'd be some kind of reference, you know. And but I'm thinking it's like Warner Brothers cartoons. They drop anvils on people, but that's that was my first thought. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's an odd mm-hmm. choice for a studio. But anyway, Anvil Studios and our our our, our lovely. Uh, Villainess, Madame Mask, Whitney Frost, is very sorrowful for the recent passing of her dear husband, uh, Mr. Chadwick. And um, she does lay it on thick for them. But, uh, Mm. you know, while she's giving her press conference, of course, she's looking directly at Peggy uh, as she talks. Mm. And she is making her plans to build out her empire. Um, uh, Sousa and Peggy pretty much agree that, you know, until they see a body, they're not assuming that, um, that, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, Dottie is dead, Hmm. which is a fair cop because the next thing we see is good old Kurt Wood Smith planning on interrogating her. And, being somewhat out of his league, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Completely out of his depth. I mean, yeah. the thing she says, I pulled out my own fingernails, I pulled out my own teeth. I was like, yeah. oh my god, this is a serious, serious spy. Yeah, well, you know, I guess you'd have to, you know. you got to be ready to deal with this kind of stuff. This is the stuff they're going to do. Although, I'm going to be honest with you, you don't pull out someone's fingernails. You put something under the fingernail because it's not the, the, the pain, it's the prolonged agony. Oh, that's that's what you want to go for. You want that thing that's, you know, because interrogationist should never be in a hurry. If you're in a hurry, you're just going to get bad intel. You you wanna you want it to be an ongoing process. Mm. You know, mm. unfortunately, Kurtwood does not have that luxury of time, um, and you know that puts him in a difficult position because. If you can't torture him and you have no, t- you don't have the time to do it in. What are you supposed to do? Have no leverage. Yeah, he has no leverage. But um, you know, uh, Whitney does have leverage. <laughs> and and how? 
this is the I'll do it myself scene where, you know, she comes up and essentially uses this when we don't know what it does. And that's the thing is we don't know what it does, but we do know it's bad hmm. because, you know, well, I mean, we kind of know what it does. She did it to Chadwick and to the other dudes at the table. And I mean, and they're, well, we've well, I guess her. we don't know where they went, but we're assuming they're dead, right? Yeah. But in all those cases, she, she absorbed them. In this case, what she's doing is just running the darkness, the zero matter, through someone else. Yeah, I felt like it was, like, you know, just the tip kind of, you know. It's like yeah. uh, I'm just going to put it in you for a little bit to scare you and then pull it out. Kind of I'm going to taste yeah. you but not devour you. Exactly, but it's, it, it, it is – I imagine there's a psychological – because that's the thing. If it was just pain – if it was just because we see that... No, it, it, it's really the, the threat of actually ending you. She doesn't feel like, you know, the American establishment has the guts to actually kill her, so they have nothing to threaten her with. Uh, pain is pain she's comfortable with, but this oh, woman, no. she knows, she's seen what she does to people, and so that is a very real threat. Either. Huh? I, don't think she, I don't think it's... That. I do not think she's afraid of death. I don't think death is in any way... Her fear in this. No, there's something else on the other side, and that's what we're getting from this: is that there's something, something else on the that, that there's something on the other side. Some consciousness that is looking back. Hmm. That is what is frightening because we we hear it, we hear it. That's interesting. Um, we get, yeah, I yeah, see we that. We hear about it. Next episode is is the voice, and we've seen that with uh with Dr. Wilkes when hmm. he fades out and he sees what is effectively the upside down. Hmm. Hmm. Now, as has been said, you know, this is this is like when we get into when we start talking about the whole of the MCU, this zero matter is was thought to be tied to the dark dimension where Dam- Dormammu is from. Hmm. So there's a very real aspect of this story that is, oh yeah, Dormammu and the Dark Dimension and the Mindless Ones and all of this magic that is just outside of our realm that is so much more scary than anything mm-hmm. in this realm. And that is that is the reality of it. Um we do get uh, Wilkes's um, Wilkes's uh, cage made, mm-hmm. so that he can become solid again, and then for the first moment, really gets to be solid with Peggy, and it is a moment for the both of them that they they can touch for once. They, I believe, they actually kiss, if I'm not mistaken. Right, but unfortunately the, for for Wilkes. There's been uh, a recent development in her romantic career. Oh, well, I mean, it's, you know, everybody loves Peggy. Peggy's got her own thing, you know. That, that's yeah, the no, but, but she's feeling Sousa, too, and she has been for a yeah. while. And, you know, Wilkes was nice, but, but she came here uh, with the hopes of getting with Sousa. Yeah. And that's well, finally know. becoming possible. So it's like that kiss is very awkward for her because she was just about to kiss Sousa. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but she kisses him back too. So Right, it's, right, which is, I mean, like, know. it's like, okay, you know, I can see where he's coming from. He's not really – and I don't care to have the conversation that that's not appropriate any longer at the moment. So whatever. That was well, – I, think, I mean, the, again, I, I don't think – see, I think you're reading – more into her I, I think she was into it I think that was one she didn't want to be uh, well who wants to she doesn't want to feel it for Sousa either that's the thing it's like here she is she's got these two guys that are I don't, I don't know if she feels. doesn't want to feel it she's excited that Sousa's available no I think she's I think she blame I think she's mad. I do not think right, she's but she was about, about to kiss him. They were about. They were both about it in that moment. Yeah, well, I mean, without a yes, they were, but that doesn't mean that. And that's sort of this thing. So right now, she because Sousa wanted to be with his girl, 
his girl broke up with him because his girl felt that he was still hung up on Peggy. Now, whether he was or he wasn't, it was at the end of the day, he kind of felt that, you know what? Peggy is unavailable. Right. That if this was going to be me and Peggy, it shouldn't have to be me chasing her. You know, maybe he'd like to be chased for a little bit. Um, especially when it is this whole thing where, you know, he's he wants to be this good guy. He wants to be her friend. And her romantic interest has always been at, at an arm's length because her career came first. Hmm. You know, and I think that is because, you know, for what it's worth, you know, if we go back to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., there really is no implication that they were together at that time. That's true. You know, it it, it clearly says he wishes he could have said goodbye. Hmm. But he doesn't he doesn't sit there like he's hung up on her. You know, and clearly because he does start his relationship with 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 um, Daisy by the end of that. So that's you know, also true. You know, at any point in the whole story, you know, he could have gone back to Peggy, or he could have done whatever he was going to do. Um, and you know, and for all we know, Peggy was already rehooked up with Cat by that point. But um, huh. yeah, also that's true. Yeah, that's another universe, as they say. <laughs> but, um, Fair enough. You know, as as it as it stands, you know, I think, you know, because I think she was into Wilkes. I think she was very much into Wilkes. Now, and this is also maybe even a, a, a secondary aspect of that, where, you know, Peggy's into these guys in the sense that she's into these guys. I almost felt like it's like, her. oh, who's who? Who am I going to? You know, who, who will I wed and and have a home with a nice picket fence with? I don't think she wants that with either of them. I think that's maybe right. that's the problem with Peggy is that she definitely is a woman who is not looking to get married. You know, as it was, she had a guy, and then she decided that no, this was there was something else she had to do. Yeah, but with someone like Souza, their partnership in the business, so to speak, um, could prove to be an interesting dynamic to play a relationship off of. Yeah, but then at the same time, then maybe that's even more reason not to. You know, I know it is the 50s, but still, you know, maybe it would be better if they didn't, if she wasn't sleeping with the boss, as it were. (laughs) Or when she eventually becomes the boss, that Seuss is sleeping with the boss, you know. Uh, the, there's so many awkward levels to their relationship. I absolutely understand why, you know, she would be much more interested in Wilkes. So I do yeah, not... I, I always she's... felt like Wilkes was like a reactionary rebound kind of thing. She was just like, oh, Seuss is not available. I feel uncomfortable and this guy's here. Might as well give it a shot and she sort of let it well, go. yeah, but again, like I said, I get the feeling... in. I think in both cases, it's it's this reality that she likes the idea of these men. That doesn't mean she wants to give them what they're looking for. Hmm. These guys are looking true. I see that. for, you know, these guys are looking, even if they're okay with her being, you know, um, you know, Peggy Carter super spy as her day job. They're still thinking of domesticity, and, you know, I don't know if Peggy is ever going to want that. Although, then again, from what we've seen in the movies, we know that eventually she does get married and have children. But who she has children with, we still don't know. Um, Bum, bum, bum. (laughs) Okay. Hmm. Uh, But getting back to this story, so Peggy... um, and, you know, they're trying to, you know, Jarvis fixes the transponder thing. And I was surprised. I thought, I thought that, um, I thought that, uh, what's her name? Uh, Dottie had taken off the necklace, but apparently she had not. Um, because. Yeah, because she can't. Because it would blow up otherwise, right? Oh. Oh, was that? Eh, okay. I think that's like the, the thing they told her. I don't know how true it was, but. Yeah. Yeah, so fair enough, fair enough. Um, that could have just been them whistling Dixie at her. But, um, 
as it yeah, stands, I don't see them actually, you know, killing yeah. her. That's not their style, for, I guess. Yeah, and for, but for what it's worth, um, uh, Whitney Frost has taken it off. Right. But she also is able to use that to to later turn the transponder back on so that when they turn on the tracker, the tracker, they're able to see her. And, you know, of course they make, you know, they know it's a trap and everyone knows it's a trap, which is always very interesting. Say, well, obviously if if we can find her on the transponder now, it's because it's a trap. Um, And they get the little, which I thought was kind of a cool device. I guess that's the early repulsor ray Mm. is the uh, little, um, cannon that they create you know the little uh concussion cannon um right. although obviously the the joke is is which we'll get to which we'll get to in a minute is that <laughs> jarvis does it just fine the first time and then um when they actually go to utilize it as they're breaking into uh whitney frost's lair and they have um the Manfredi goons uh, coming up to to her, uh, coming up to them. He puts in the number, and it doesn't work. And so they surrender and they're captured. And then you know they're all, they're they're all tied up. And Peggy and Dottie are talking, and Dottie makes the point that you know yes, it's a trap, but not for you. Hmm. And this brings us back to Wilkes because, of course, that's who, that's who, um, that's who the trap is for. Yeah, well, that's who, that's who Whitney wants. Whitney wants Wilkes because she knows Wilkes is alive and ha- and has been exposed to the to the zero matter. Um. And this actually leads to a nice little scene with, um, with, um, oh, what's Jarvis's wife's name? I'm blanking on it all of a sudden. Um, Ooh, um yes. Mrs. Yes. Jarvis, let's just say. Mrs. Jarvis, so, and Mrs. Jarvis makes the Hungarian food for him. Anna mm. Jarvis, Anna, Anna, that's ah. her name. And, um, what and immediately and this is just where my mind is just because I always think about this with the whenever we watch the DC movies or DC TV shows and they're in their little prison cells and there's no toilet and he's sitting there eating this big Hungarian meal and all I'm thinking of is this is going to be a problem in about an hour. <laughs> well, unless he disincorporates, you know, then he'll be fine, I guess. Well, yeah, except you know then. Does that does that disincorporate with him, or does so, it come back with him? Well, that's the thing. So he dis- disincorporates, and now that's disincorporated, right. but he still has to deal with it. When he gets and then, you know, so like, you know, I guess maybe if if he deals with the dis, maybe it remains disincorporated, and it just goes to the center of the earth. So there we go. Problem <laughs> solved. <laughs> These are the things I think about, but um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so so she goes to get Wilkes, and you know realizes that he's you know in the cage, and she goes to use her powers on him, but then he pulls the zero matter matter out of her, mm. which is and that of course gives him his. His physicality again. So now he has physicality. And he can and exist outside the cage. Exactly. But they also make the point about, oh, but it's temporary and this and that. And it, it's it's a very interesting exchange they make, especially, man, she she gets him. She gets him um, when he's like, the world's just fine the way it is. And she's like, is it though? I mean. Yeah. You know, and it and it really puts the puts the onus back on him and like, no, the world is not fine. The world is not fine in any way, but that doesn't mean it would be better under the dictatorial rule of one um, Whitney Frost. You know, that whatever whatever promise Whitney might make, it's it's temporary at best, and. And her motivation isn't pure in it either. It's, okay, well, what if 
you what what if you work with me and then I'll do this thing it's like well if you were really that that redemptive then that would be the thing you'd do anyway you know um it is uh it it is it is a uh it it is a pretty rough um rough go there uh, to say the least hmm. um no i mean do you have a different opinion on that or no i mean it takes her a while to open up to him to really sort of drive the point home that she started with saying hey maybe the world's not okay and the solution is not that hey we can make the world okay that's not what moves him what moves him is that you can exist outside that structure and you can be stronger and you can be powerful that's what moves him eventually yeah i mean i i i, I he has I like the the capacity in him to be an evildoer and she plays on that and and, and lets it blossom a little bit yeah, and we actually see some of that a bit next next episode as well, um, which again is why I do think that there is more to Peggy's relationship with both of these men than we get on either side of it. But um, hmm. as it stands, you know, when um, Whitney is taking Wilkes out of there, and Anna try and Anna comes to to realizes what they're doing they you know and then when you know uh, I, i'm trying to remember if uh, peggy and jarvis are out of the car no they're not out of the car yet no that's right but they know that it's coming but they are pulling up and whitney says the makes the point i don't have to you know basically i don't have to you know because anna says you know she will come for you regardless and and, uh, you know, Whitney's like, well, I know that, but all I need is some time. And then she shoots Anna, which is, which is just, just, just horrific. Shoots her in, uh, uh, interestingly enough, the same spot that Peggy got wounded, which is an huh. interesting thing. It, it's the same, like, lower, lower, um... <clears throat> I feel like that's always outside. that's also sort of like the go-to spot in movies where you shoot somebody if you want them to survive. Yeah, if you don't want them to die just yet. That's, <laughs> right. uh, but it's a that, clever a move on story. her part. What you know, she doesn't kill her; she gives them work. Yes. You know, because she, now they need to I'm, go tend to her condition and can't you know give pursuit as well as as uh, they would have. Exactly. And they do, and for what it's worth, you know, they rush her to the hospital. And this is, you know, this is the idea that, you know, Jarvis cannot make promises he cannot keep. Mm. And, um, you know, that is, that's just this go-to line throughout it, you know, of don't make promises you can't keep. Um, Because I think he even says to her, you know, you're going to be fine. And she's like... Isn't that also what... Uh, Peggy said to Cap right as he was going down into the glacier? No. No, it's don't make not. Real, no? I don't think so. When he says, you know, oh, no, she agrees to the dance. When he says, yeah. I'll see you next to you, she, she doesn't, oh, right, she doesn't question it. She plays along. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so it's 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 sad. Um, but, you know, uh, they take Peggy there. Um, interesting. Hey, 1950s diversity. There's an Asian doctor. Mm-hmm. So... Um, you know, that's good. And uh, he is the surgeon on call, and he fixes up Anna as best he can. And do we get a resolution to the, to that yet, or is it still – To it Anna? End with her, yeah, to Anna. Does it no, end no, with not her yet. Surgery? Yeah. Yeah. So, she, so it, that ends with her in surgery. And, yeah, this is very much – I feel this is kind of like the Empire Strikes Back episode where basically the villains win everything. <laughs> you know, so it's ending on this very dark, dark moment of the villains triumphant and what will the heroes do next? Uh, um, any final thoughts on tonight's episode, Maz? Um, the bit with Thompson, that happens next episode, right? Yeah, Thompson is next episode. Thompson, Thompson I've got to, I, I kind of realized who Thompson is. And we'll talk about that next episode. And and yeah, I think you, I think you'll be mad about who I say he is, but when I describe it, I think you're going to understand why. Yeah, that is exactly who Thompson is. Perhaps um, I think what what annoys me is, or, or what 
this storyline is more telling of is not the character of Thompson, but, m you know, I guess the character or maybe the skill level of the writers who wrote that character. Uh, I'm super annoyed by it. But yeah, in I sharp mean, contrast, uh, we get that bit in this episode where Kurtwood tries to intimidate or tries to sweet talk um, Sousa, and Sousa's not having it. Oh, yeah. Oh, and also within this episode, yeah, that's actually the B plot we didn't get to in this. Right. Which was, and yeah, so, okay, that is this episode. So this episode opens up, so, okay. Because this is where he gets the uh, file on Peggy, right? Right. No, I, that I don't know if it happens this episode, but but Sousa, um, um, well, because Whitney has assigned um, Kurtwood to get her the uranium that Peggy had stolen. Right. So Kurtwood comes to Sousa to say, hey, I need your help finding these uranium rods, buddy. Um, you know, yeah. they would love a good story like yours in, in Washington. I could put mm -hmm. you places. And he's like, oh, yeah, well, you know, I'll do the best I can. Yeah, <laughs> which is not the best he can. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, in the color of his eyes, he lets him know what that really means. And he pays yeah. for it. Yeah. And this, again, shows, like, how small time Kurtwood is in his attempts to – threaten um, um, Dottie and in his attempt to exact some kind of punishment on Souza. It's such like a like a baby tactics. Oh, I'm going to have some guys rough you up. I mean, I, I guess it is the 50s, but it sounds like an old 50s move, you know? But yeah, it shows well, it, sort of yeah. how inept at these dynamics uh, Kurt would perhaps is. Yeah, and and that is, I think, very much what it, what is the issue. He is Kurtwood is used to being at the top of this pecking order and so there's not a whole convolution to it you know there's not a lot of aspects to it where he does isn't in control and now now suddenly everything's been turned upside down he's taking orders from this person who is not who he usually takes orders from and mm. her motivations and desires are completely alien to him because you know normally it's just okay we maintain the status quo and everything operates the way it's supposed to, and nobody – well, lots of people get hurt, but we don't, <laughs> you know. And now it's like, okay, he has no leverage because even even as it plays out, I mean, for what it's worth, Sousa knows that Kurtwood is basically – you know, uh, not Dottie, is, um, is uh, Whitney's errand boy. And it's like, you know, I didn't give these things to you before. Why am I going to give them to you now? I when, mean, really. when you actually had power and were working with the arena club. Oh, right. That's I, also true, right? Yeah. It's like I wasn't particularly um, cooperative then. What makes you think now just because you just because you try to turn on the charm that I'm going to be? You know, but, you know, puts him on leave, all this kind of stuff. It's sort of as his punishment, which is like, you know, mm. Mm. okay, yeah. But it almost yeah. made me think like Sousa's like, oh, okay, now I don't have to report to the office at all, and I can just do whatever I want, and I have all my time to myself to focus on you, buddy. Good job. <laughs> I was like, yeah. all right. <laughs> exactly. It's not the best. No it paperwork. <laughs> and there, and, uh, Kurt, but that's the problem is Kurtwood is trying to, trying to not get, you know, turned into goo. And, mm. but there's only so much you can do because, you know, these, you know, for what it's worth, much like Dottie, these were all trained professionals. Mm. These are people who are not just going to fold like a deck of cards because, you know, he looks at a mean, you know. <laughs> Hmm. For what it's worth, even with Thompson, the only reason Thompson even gives Kurt with deference is because they have this long history. But even, and, even, and yeah. because Thompson's genuinely a coward. To, to a grand extent, yes. But I think more than that, it is just that – because that's the thing, you know, and that's something I want to get into next episode is I guess he's a coward, but he's also – he's not a bad guy. Oh, I think he is a bad guy, and I think he knows it, and I think he's okay oh. with it, and I think that bothers him. Well, you know, uh, yeah. I, what I'll say is he's very venial. He, he he's he's a coward, and he looks out for number one, but not to the extent 
and that's the I believe he has a line that he will not cross, and that line is when he feels he is when 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 this will be bad for not just him, but this is bad. No, I I think that's an arbitrary line that is just there that wasn't designed to be there that serves the plot. I think it's just a poorly written character that's impossible to reconcile the many pieces of his personality that you get in different seasons and different episodes. Yeah. It, you know, yeah. I mean, it, I think he, we have yeah. to make convenient justifications for it. And they're really hard to, to, you know, join with other theories that are easy to come to. Well, uh, like I said, when we get to next, them. when we get to next episode, I'm going to give you my theory. I, I'm going to explain to you who he is and how that character, because it makes sense in context. When you think about it, everything we know about him is very consistent with this other very famous character that you wouldn't associate with him. But once you get there, you're going to go, ah, yes, I understand now. All right. All right. But anyway, to that. Uh, in the meantime, in the meantime, you know, Maz, if you're listening to this right now on uh, substandard headphones, uh, you may what be missing. I do? You 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 may be missing a lot of the nuance of this conversation. And to that, I highly recommend you or any of our listeners go over to tweakedaudio.com. Yes, tweakedaudio.com, uh, providers of fine uh, sonic equipment for your perusal and use. Use the coupon code Southgate to get a discount on your purchase. Likewise, uh, another thing you can use that coupon code SOUTHGATE for is to get a discount on Hunt a Killer uh, over there at huntakiller.com where uh, Michelle Gray is trying to solve a cold case and could use your help and where there is going to be a Blair Witch themed case coming into Hunt a Killer soon. So that could be interesting and so you should definitely go to huntakiller.com and look out Look for all of that information. And if you also are done with that, have nothing else to do, why don't you just swing on down, swing on down to our show notes, click on the Amazon link in our show notes, and go to Amazon.com where literally everything else in the world is for sale. You can buy it there, have it delivered right to your home, Cost you nothing to do it this way. It helps out the show. And while you're there, check out Pod Life, the book, uh, the only book written by the Southgate Media Group family about the joys, perils, and positivity of being a podcaster. And if anyone has any interest in any of that and they'd like to talk to you, Moz, about this, how can they find you? They can email me at mozmanzor at gmail.com or find me on Facebook under Moz Manzor. That's M O Z. M A N Z O O R. And of course, if you'd like to write to me in that old fashioned email way, the way our Moz and Paws once did, do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter as I live tweet something at some point, possibly Amphibia, because that's still on the air and still has live broadcasts, but I have to figure out exactly when that is. I think it's sometime on Saturday. Hmm. At Charlie Esser, that's C H A R L I E E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! Thank you, Maz. <laughs> All right, me hearties, you've survived another night at the stormy seas with me and Maz. We're docking now, but come on back again next week as we once again go full stream ahead. <laughs> Arr. Mm-hmm. <laughs>